Listen up, ladies. It's... Hey guys, welcome back to Danny Code episode four. Still in quarantine, nails aren't done. Not having fun, etc., etc., etc. But we're back, episode four. Being alone. Being alone is just like the new normal for everyone in 2020 with the quarantine, coronavirus. I don't know when this video is gonna be uploaded, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume we're probably still at home by ourselves. And before I was like a homebody, I liked to be by myself, and now I still like to be by myself. What about you? Randy? Um, you know, I traveled a lot, and it's starting to get to me when I'm indoors so much, I kind of feel like a caged animal, so it kind of is affecting me at this point. Um, I just feel like I want to be out and I want to be doing stuff and I feel like I am trapped. So it's like kind of, I feel a little pressure in my chest and it's not coronavirus. <laughs> I actually, I actually, this is the first time in my life where I'm like, I really think I need to start being more social and going out more because now that I've been home and I'm kind of on, it's like Groundhog Day, the movie where you just keep repeating the same day over and over and over again, but every day you're just tweaking small little things, but still you're waking up and you're just in a loop i feel like that's how i feel but it being alone outside of quarantine let's not focus on that part let's just say being alone in life um if you say being alone for the rest of my life i will cry myself to sleep because i really do believe there's a guy out there for me but at this point like where is he at <laughs> where is he I, I honestly feel that i'm alone half of the time uh so Alone doesn't bother me, so I'm, I'm excited when I'm alone. Um, the thing is, being alone and not being able to do stuff, then you feel really alone. So that's, like, what's affecting me right now. I know. I just, like, I like, like, when it comes to going out with females, I like to be, uh, like, I'd rather be alone, like, on a Friday night if someone's like, let's go to Tao or, like, let's hit the club after. I'd rather be home by myself. But in a relationship or wanting a relationship, obviously no one wants to fuck. Be alone and people that say they want to be alone are probably lying you're lying no one wants to be by themselves not a single human being so that's that one night stands one night stands I had one and I'll never do it again and it wasn't like one of those one night stands where like I had no choice and like I could make it work for a two night stand or a three night stand it was literally one night and done for him so it's just like a kind of like eerie, not like eerie, but like kind of like a, you have self pity after a one night stand. Unless of course you chose it and you wanted it. I wanted him, but I didn't want him for one night. I don't want anyone for one night. And I don't want someone to want me for one night. Cause then I'm going to be like, is my trash? Was my game not good? You don't want to like get your sucked twice? Like what is this? Do you feel that being a one night stand puts you in the category as a and you know, the more one night stands you have, the more less you feel about yourself. Ooh, that was deep. Um, yeah, I do think that like after I had a one night stand, I felt like a hole. I felt like all he wanted was sex and he got it. And it was just a kind of sh feeling where I knew I couldn't do this again. I can't just sleep with someone and just never talk to them again or see them again. It's just weird. It's like, what was the even, why did I f you? What did I even get out of what? Five, 10 minutes of your dick and pleasure and then what never talk to you again so i feel like women that have constant one night stands are struggling with some internal demons that they probably should just see a therapist about crying i cry all the time i cry about everything i cry in commercials i cry when someone's being mean to me i cry when i'm angry i cry when i'm happy i cry when i'm hungry i cry all the time and i think there's nothing wrong with crying i think the more you cry the more probably emotional and, and empathetic you are as a human being i think it's weird when people don't cry like someone in their family dies nothing their dog dies nothing they just like lost a hundred thousand dollars, nothing. Just reminds me of like being a serial killer or something happened to you. You probably should tell somebody. Do you ever feel emotionally drained after you cry? Like how do you, how do you live with 
crying and then after that don't you feel emotionally drained where you just want to like sleep or like you just feel depressed like how does that work for you if you're happy and you're crying uh, do you feel any type of way after you're happy but you're crying because of happiness do you yeah. feel emotionally drained or is it a different kind of feeling no they're both the same crying is crying and it does get you tired you don't want to do anything after you want to sleep you actually get a headache it's like an instant headache and the headache lasts for the rest of the day and you just feel like you smoke 20 joints because of how tired you are. You just want to go yeah, straight to eyes, bed. My eyes feel hella sore right after. Yeah, and like puffy, your head feels a thousand pounds. It takes, if you cry in the morning, the rest of your day is ruined. Like you're doing, <laughs> you are doing nothing. You will not have a productive day. If you cry at night right before bed, you'll have the best night's sleep ever. Right. I actually, yeah, and I actually look really pretty the morning after a night I cried. Like, I look like gorgeous with no makeup on when my eyes are a little puffy from crying. <laughs> Just a trick, if any lady wanted to know, cry right before a big date. <laughs> the night before. Okay. The night before, yes. Yeah, not the day of. He'll think you're a lunatic, and that date won't go anywhere. <laughs> New relationships. I wouldn't know that feeling, wouldn't know that emotion. Um, honestly, I haven't had a new relationship in almost two years. Yeah, almost, like damn near September will be two years. I just, I miss like the excitement of it all. Like the butterflies when they text you or call you or getting dressed to the nines on the two dates you have on the weeks that you hang out. Um, first sleepovers are always fun. Like when do you like start leaving a toothbrush next to their toothbrush? Like. I miss that feeling, but I can't really tell you anything about it because I haven't had one in so long. Oh my god. <laughs> Are we deeping, uh, thinking deep at, at this time? We're diving into the shallow end. Yeah, new relationships are fun. <laughs> if you can make them work, they're like the best thing on earth. You get the butterflies in the stomach, the goosebumps when you're about to see them. You know, that feeling is always great. And then six or seven months in, you either love them or you don't want to be with them anymore might even be less time than that from experience from experience my relationships um i don't think in the past four years i haven't had one that has gone past a month or two or three i think the three months was the longest and most of the most of the time we were just like arguing or fighting in between having sex so like was it even really a relationship probably not no and now I'm I'm swimming in self pity and loath. So we're gonna end and this. And now you're gonna go back to crying. And now I'm gonna cry for the rest of the <laughs> night. My day is ruined. Thanks a lot, Randy. You are welcome. <laughs> but your face is gonna look glowing tomorrow, so we are happy about this. Yeah, glowing to stay in the house for quarantine. <laughs> Can't wait.